Good morning, everybody. Um, actually, as you can see, the title of my talk has changed a little bit um, because my talk is based on a on a longer paper that I just submitted. So fingers crossed to, to an academic journal. Um, it's called "Outsourcing Humanity?" Question mark ChatGPT, critical thinking, and the crisis in higher education. Some of you might wonder what the skeleton, the monster, does here. Uh, this image, what it what it means, uh, it yeah. Oh yeah, okay. I, I, okay, sorry. I'm used to to wandering around all the time. Shouldn't do this. Um, this is a specter that is hunt, haunting universities. I tried to come up with a better image of a specter, but all that's coming up is James Bond images all the time. So this is the best that I that I uh, could come up with. Um, what am I? What am I gonna ask in my talk? I'm basically asking two questions. The first one: Can I sit down? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, the first question that I'm gonna ask is: What is this fuss all about at universities? If it is true that ChatGPT cannot think, and if it is true that ChatGPT cannot think critically, why are universities? and other research institutes so concerned about ChatGPT. And then the second question is, how should universities actually react to what has been called the ChatGPT revolution? So just as the previous talk, which I really liked a lot, I'm trying not just to be critical, but also constructive um, at the same time. So as to the first question, I'd, I'd like to give three potential answers. The first potential answer is, well, what the heck are you talking about? Nobody is concerned about ChatGPT. Can I ask the audience, is, is that the case for those teaching at universities? Which universities are not concerned or not particularly interested in ChatGPT? Sorry? <laughs> Harvard. Oh, I, I don't know about Harvard. Um, I just know about the, the universities that I'm interacting with, um, that is the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, where I get my PhD from, University of Vienna, uh, Central European University, which is also based in Vienna, the small private university where I'm um, teaching. Uh, we are cooperating a lot with the University of London and the, the London School of Economics. Everybody seems to be freaking out about ChatGPT, uh, at least to some degree. So I think if we want to make the argument that universities are not concerned about ChatGPT, um, you can tell me over a cup of coffee or anything like that, but I'm, I'm not convinced. The second and more, uh, perhaps more interesting um, argument is, well, ChatGPT can think critically. Um, and I would like to go into that in a little bit more detail. Um, I will reject this argument as well, um, although um, I'm not a technology person, I'm more of a political theorist, so you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that ChatGPT can think or that it can think critically. The final response that I have is the most provocative, um, at least from my perspective as a university teacher, is uh, probably universities do not pay as much attention to critical thinking as we would like to uh, claim. This, this is really weird. Uh, okay, so the, the, the first question then is, what do we mean by critical thinking? Uh, just, just as a recommendation for you, there is this foundation for critical thinking. It, it's a website uh, that is really good. It gives you some really good and really neat uh, definitions of what critical thinking might mean. This definition of critical thinking that you see on the slide is my own definition of critical thinking. I think what it is about is to look at a given or a specific problem from a variety of different angles. I also think that uh, we will be hearing a 
presentation this afternoon on emotions on artificial intelligence, but I also think that it is important when you do critical thinking to distance yourself as far as possible from your own emotions and from your own prejudices. This is for me really a marker of critical thinking um, as well. And then critical thinking is always creative. Critical thinking is always to a certain degree a judgment where you put yourself, as Hannah Arendt once put it so beautifully, in someone else's shoes and you try to think from their perspective as well. And then you come up with what she calls a judgment, which is basic uh, critical evaluation. So critical thinking is always evaluative. It's always a judgment. And now I would like to have shown you an interaction that I had with ChatGPT, but I think that's impossible. Uh, we don't want to push that technology too far, I guess. Um, so I'm just telling you. What I, what I tried to do last year when I was teaching, uh, I was teaching a course in international political theory, and I wanted ChatGPT to help me to organize one of my sessions. So I asked ChatGPT, look, um, I'm teaching this university and I have to organize a module, a session on Thomas Hobbes' notion of international relations. Can you help me organize this session? Can you give me two journal articles? Can you give me two podcast episodes? And can you give me an online video as well? And ChatGPT said, yes, Christoph, perfectly. I, I, I can help you. You know, these are the articles, these are the episodes uh, for the podcast, and this is the online lecture. So guess what? The journal articles, both of them didn't exist. The podcasts didn't exist. And the lecture it recommended didn't exist either. But that's not the point I want to make. We know that ChatGPT is bullshitting, right? As it's called in philosophy. We know it is hallucinating. That's not the main point I'm trying to make. The main point is the title for the journal articles that ChatGPT gave me. And I'm reading them out. Uh, the title of the first article, Thomas Hobbes and the concept of the state of nature in international relations, allegedly published in 2018 by an author called John Doe in International Studies Quarterly, which is a pretty prestigious journal. Right. The second article, uh, Review of International Studies, 2019, author Jane Smith, titled Hobbesian Realism, a reassessment of Hobbes' contribution to international relations. What you can see, you might not be an international relations specialist, these are terribly cliched titles. It would be very, very difficult to publish anything like that with such a cliched title in a very prestigious journal in 2019. So I became really interested what, what had happened here, right? And I think what had happened here is a glimpse of how ChatGPT works or how ChatGPT does not work. I did a little bit of research, but my understanding of technological issues is very limited. What I think ChatGPT has done, it has detected a language pattern online. It was trying to string together the most common sequences of words. Thomas Hobbes, international relations, the state of nature, probably the Leviathan somewhere. And it gave it to me as the most likely answer. Of course, ChatGPT doesn't care that these journal articles do not exist, but it's the most common answer that it came up with. Um, so, as the good mathematician that ChatGPT is, it had calculated this sequence of words and it said, Christoph, this is the answer, right? But I think if that is true, if it works like that, and again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but if it works like that, then ChatGPT is calculated by design hostile to any form of originality, to any form of critical thinking, to any form of producing something new, it can only reproduce. So if that is true, then the question again, why are universities concerned about ChatGPT if it cannot think critically? And I think what uh, universities are concerned is 
what ChatGPT can do is it can give you a very easy pass as a student. I did an experiment with my students. I did an experiment with other professors as well. Um, according to the British grading marking system, it can get uh, between a 45 and a 55 in undergraduate essays. For those who are not familiar with the British uh, marking scale, this is a pretty mediocre uh, mark that you can get with ChatGPT. But still, you can get a pass, right? And that's the important thing. So students put in absolutely no effort into their exams, into their um, essays, and still they pass. So what universities are concerned, and I think rightly so, is that ChatGPT hands out basically a free pass to all students. Everybody passes, and university degrees become absolutely worthless. Again, if that is true, then the most likely answer is universities pay very little attention to critical thinking. Because if you can get away in university exams without critical thinking and still get a pass in your exams, right? then you don't pay as much attention to critical thinking at universities as we would like to think. So again, for me, this is uncomfortable. Two, two minutes. Yeah. What are we going to do? We, are, we have been told numerous times in a perpetual crisis of education. Hannah Arendt talked about that, the crisis in education. Uh, but also Martha Nussbaum, more recently. She has this wonderful book where she said, we are in a silent but worldwide cri crisis of education. What we are doing is we are producing students as useful machines useful machines for the, for the job market, basically. And I have to say that my experience coming from the University of Vienna, where I studied law, is very much the same. I think we are producing way too many useful machines for uh, the job market. What are we going to do? What should we be doing about this crisis in education? I think it it's true that ChatGPT exacerbates the crisis in education, and I also think that's a good thing. Because now, finally, universities have to get to their act together, and they have to change how they teach, how they assess, how they mark, how they grade, and how they um, actually, well, deal with ChatGPT as well. I think what we should be doing is adopting more innovative assessment strategies. I can talk about that a little bit more. We need to heighten expectations in essays. That's a controversial claim that I'm making, and that's an uncomfortable claim for many students. I think we need to actively engage with things like ChatGPT. We need to tell students that ChatGPT is hallucinating. And finally, we need to reinstate what we call at my university an engagement grade. So not just grading and marking on papers and exams, but also taking participation and engagement into consideration. Again, my students don't like the engagement grade. I'm very upfront about this, but I think it's absolutely necessary now with ChatGPT. Finally, and then I shut up, uh, if it is true that ChatGPT it exacerbates the crisis in education, then we should see the crisis in education as an opportunity not to be wasted. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christoph. Uh, yeah, let's, let's take the question here. Hi, thank you for the uh, great lecture. Uh, my question is, uh, are you aware of the attempts, uh, seemingly uh, successful attempts, to uh, prompt... Uh, first, chat is not the best system that even OpenAI has. Uh, so the GPT-4 would be better in, uh, uh, in certain uh, things related to AGI. Uh, and uh, do you know the work of Salman uh, Khan Academy uh, that was prompting uh, GPT-4 to become a teacher for students, and it seems to be uh, quite good at that, so the hallucinations can be uh, prompted away uh, to a certain extent. So, and sorry, probably, what, what can be prompted away? Uh, hallucinations. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think uh, about that in, in future? Is that is that something that is a viable path? So, so maybe we can align uh, AGIs with, with our goals. Sure. Um, 
I, I attended a conference last week in Vienna, which was really pretty good, and people were talking about hallucinations. Uh, and apparently someone made a promise that all of the hallucinations will be gone by February or March next year. We, we don't know, right? We don't have a crystal ball with us. It might be possible. Um, yeah, so ChatGPT functions then without hallucinations. And yet, the point I'm trying to make is a slightly different one. Right, the point I'm trying to make, and again, you can correct me if I'm wrong because I don't know the technology behind ChatGPT that well. The point I'm trying to make, even with ChatGPT 4, and I tried it out, it cannot be creative. It cannot do critical thinking. So even if we do away with the hallucinations, which might be possible, and I think it will be possible at some point in the future, uh, sooner rather than later, I think there's an inbuilt hostility towards uh, creativity in ChatGPT, uh, and this cannot go away, at least not with uh, the way that ChatGPT works at the moment. Again, at some point we might come up with a completely different system, uh, and machines might be able to think critically, but at the moment I don't see it. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, can, can you leave it for the open discussion uh, later on, please? Um, thank you, Christopher, for your presentation. We will now have a short break. Be back 